My name is Pat Bradley. This is Spring Shoe Animation Tips and Cheats. Today's episode, animating with the camera. Sometimes you have a project where you just don't have the time or the budget to really make fancy frame by frame animation. Sometimes, sadly, you're making a glorified film strip. So take advantage of what you can do that a film strip can't by moving the camera. I use this a lot in my work because a lot of my projects have narration and sometimes the narration's too slow or I'll have really long holds and I don't want the audience to fall asleep. So I'll move the camera. Pans and trips. Of course, you can use the camera to add a slow pan or a drift to add just a little bit of movement to keep things alive. And this works especially well if you're using multiplaning and can add some depth. And I'll go into multiplaning in another video because it's a great tool to just add some interest to your camera move. Here's an example from a project I did for the Dave Matthews Band where because of the incredibly tight deadline, almost all the movement comes from just the camera. Using whip pans to connect scenes. For those who don't know, whip pan is just a really quick pan, as though someone had startled you and you look in a different direction. And it's a really easy way to connect two scenes together. You basically just have scene one and scene two, and they're spaced apart with a bunch of blur lines in between. And the camera pans about six to eight frames in between the two, and you add a bunch of motion blur. Use the camera to reveal scenes. So in this scene from the switch, the scientist is opening up all the drawers, and I wanted to get the reaction shot of Bill here, and then pull back to reveal what's inside. Same idea here for the reveal of all the peacocks that show up at the door for breakfast. Or this ancient Chinese emperor addressing his people. Or the scene where we have the mammoth being watched by a caveman, who's being watched by another caveman. Rotating the camera to create mystery or suspense. Sometimes you want to add a little bit of mystery or maybe a little bit of suspense or unease to your shot. And an easy way to do that is just rotate slowly the camera. And it's perfect for a scene like this where there isn't a whole lot of animation going on. Whoa, that's an ugly hand. That was the perfect time to hit the like button. Using the camera to focus on important details. This example is from the Watersheds animation from the Field Museum's Restoring Earth exhibit. And this is an interesting example because it's more of a poem rather than a straight script talking about a mossy forest and how it affects the entire ecosystem of the area. So let me try to just walk you through the story. It's about a minute long. We start with the establishing shot of the Philippine mountains. We pull down and we see the mossy forest. We zoom in, we see the earthworms and the paths they make to let the water flow through. The worms are eaten by the mice, which make pathways to let the roots grow. We pull back and we see the canopy of trees soften the heavy rains as they come down. So the water trickles through the soil. The water comes out as clear streams, which feeds the farms and the animals and the people below. It's where they find their food and it's their drinking water. And then we pause it right here because this is our first actual hard cut. Everything else has been fairly seamless and flowing. And you'll notice all the camera movements have been pretty much left to right, which is very comfortable for us. It's how we read. It's a little more harmonious, but after that stop, then we're moving from right to left. Which on a subconscious level is a little less comfortable. And that's the kind of feeling that we want when we're showing destruction and flooding and loss of life. And then the camera moves again from left to right because we're talking about the rebuilding of the forest and the recreation of the ecosystem. And then from here we head back to where we started. Trees, perfect for earthworms and native mice who live nowhere else but in a mossy forest high in the Philippine mountains. So I wanted to show you what this would look like without any camera movement at all. And because it's so dull, I went ahead and sped up the narration a little bit. High in the Philippine mountains, a mossy forest, perfect for earthworms who help rain trickle through, slurped up by native mice, who help young roots spread so trees grow strong. So I think you could see just how disjointed everything looks without the camera moves connecting everything in this forest together. Using a camera to crop an image to the point of abstraction. Here's an example of creating just moving wallpaper. Um, this is for Dave Matthews Band for a solo section that could have gone on forever. 
In other parts of the video, I had this chain as kind of one of the themes running throughout. So for this section, it was just using that same chain and getting so close up on it that it becomes somewhat abstract. Here's one from another Dave Matthews video. It's a close up of a curtain that opens up to reveal the next scene. So here in the project, um, the curtain itself is just a really long drawing of vertical lines that the camera is just panning down on. And we reuse this a few times to, to reveal the opening of various scenes and then reverse the animation at the end for the final scene. And no, legally, I cannot use the music from Dave Matthews' band, but these guys, June Cleaver and a Steak Knives, are totally down with it. So here's one scene from the song Looking Back, and obviously there is zero budget for this. So to keep it as interesting as possible, I'm cropping in really close. You're not even sure what it is you're looking at until it's revealed. It's the shadow, it's the shadow of a person. And there's no real movement other than the clouds drifting, and we have this slight head tilt of the guy, and then just the shimmering around the moon. That's it. The camera is doing all the work. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, love it if you'd like or subscribe. And what else? I'll have links to the full videos in the description below. And in between projects, I'll try to make more of these videos. Hopefully you like them. Thanks.